Hey everyone, I'm Sion, the Unexpected Maker. I've got a short project for you and it was inspired by Liz Clark from Blitz City DIY. She built a motorized turntable that she uses to capture B-roll footage for her videos. And I've always wanted to build a motorized turntable, but I never really had a need for it until now. You'll find out what that need is at the end of this video. So let's get making. Saturday morning and the last of the 3D prints was printing overnight and it should be done. Let's go check it out. And there it is. Awesome. Hope it works. We've got a base. Everything to sit inside. We've got the top that will spin around. I put a bearing in already because I had to hammer it. And the top has got the teeth. We've got a flex filament inner cog that goes around. Hope that works. We have a servo. This is an FS90R. It's a continuous servo. Continuous rotation. Some extra DuPont cables and I'm going to use an Arduino Nano for this. Because why not? So ultimately I want to have everything inside the case just with some power coming in through a USB. But for now I'm going to keep the microcontroller outside the case and just put the DuPont cables through a hole on the side. My biggest concern with this build is the tolerances. I haven't really checked anything against each other yet, so I don't know if, for instance, like I think my servo is going to fit in here, and I think that the top gear is going to work, but yeah, I just I don't know. So let's find out. This could be a fail. So let's start, I guess, with the servo, getting the servo in. Now, there's a slot on the side where the servo is held in to get the cables through, because the cables stupidly come out the bottom like this. So we need to feed that through. If it fits, oh, just a little bit tight. Okay, now can I get the servo in? Okay, that might be a bit rough. I don't want to squish the cables. Okay, come on. Okay, yes, well that's a super... If I squish the cables a little bit, damn. Okay, hopefully I did not destroy the cables. That's a very tight fit. I don't even have to screw that in. That servo is not going anywhere. Cool. Okay. And of course we've got the top plate for the servo that I'm going to use that I'm going to, hmm, I didn't particularly want to screw it down and then I've got a hole here that I can screw it down with, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough height for the top of the screw. Um, I thought that maybe what I could do for now is just double sided tape it on. It's a fairly snug fit as you can see but I think it's going to potentially slip maybe I don't know I don't even know if this will stay on without me tightening it okay so I think we've got our first problem that gear is too wide for this outer edge I probably printed this outer edge too thick but it doesn't go low enough to interfere with it really so I think we might be able to get away with it I just might not be able to have the top sit all the way onto it okay let's um, wire this up I need to feed these DuPont cables through the hole hopefully I can get them all through hopefully I made the hole big enough Ooh, just okay 
<laughs> cool. And then I need to wire this together. So we need ground to ground. As you can see, this is all very temporary. Let me just see if we can do them all in one hit. Ground to ground, VCC and data. Okay, so that's just going to sit loosely inside for now. I might tape that down in a moment. So on the Nano, I've just installed the sweep example from the standard servo examples. And I've got it wired to D4. What I want to do is, which way am I going to do this? So I need ground, goes to the ground pin. I've got VCC going to five volts, and then the data is going to go to D4. Okay. Ooh, I don't even know if it's going to stay on. I don't think it will by itself. I think the friction of the top might make it come off. I might have to screw it down. Okay. The kits come with little screws to screw the top on. My biggest concern... Well, firstly, that's not going to go all the way in. That definitely looks too big. Let me try it. a screwdriver. So if it doesn't go all the way in, the top is not going to stay on. The top won't fit. So I don't think the top is going to sit flush now. Not enough. No. Okay, so the only other option I've got is to screw it through the top. But I don't think I've got enough clearance on the top for the screw for the top turning plate. Okay, that extra height there might not allow this to sit on, or it might scrape. Well, I guess we'll find out soon. Let's see how low we can get this. Not low enough. Yeah, that screw is going to be in the way, I think. Oh, let's, let's see if that turns. Okay, one last piece that goes in is this little mounting piece goes in the middle and it's designed to have a tiny pico sit in it. How cool is that? So let's, I'm not going to push it all the way in just yet, but let's see if that spins. <laughs> okay, a little nervous. Let's plug it in. Well, a bit noisy, but it works. There's a bit of scraping. So luckily, I don't care about the noise, <laughs> but there's definitely some scraping going on because of that screw. So I might need to print a slightly wider base, but this will work. This, this, yeah, this works. This is, well, let me just um, plug it back in and put on a bit of an angle. Yeah. That's a win.